Hey, you guys. So today I am going to be teaching you some of the things I have learned throughout the years on how to pick the correct logo. I have done many logos in my time. I have had a couple of businesses. I have created um, logos for young ladies. I've created websites based off of my personal experience. So I've learned what's good and what's not good based off of was I going to be um, printing the logo? Oh, shucks. I'm messing up. Was I going to be, um, you know, what am I going to be doing with the logo? So that's what we're going to be discussing today. So I want you, that, want you guys, I'm going to wait for a couple of people to join me, but uh, I that's what can we're hear you. I want you to, um, I mean, I can't, I can see the typing. So I want you to um, ask me any questions. All right. So I'm going to, first I'm going to go through the logos and what sometimes you guys send me. And when, I'm going to go through why each logo may not be a right fit for you. Um, so some of the reasons um, you guys pick logos is because you really want something that looks nice. And I get it. You want something that's going to look nice. You want something that is going to represent you, what's going to look appealing to your audience. The problem with that, though, is you may be using the wrong things to guide your business decisions. And that's pretty much emotions. Logos like this, this is like a new trend with the hair coming out um, and glitter and um, gold. These are bad designs because one, hey, uh, Miss Smith, one, they are not going to print well. When I say they're not gonna print well, they're not gonna print well on paper and they're not gonna print well if you are getting, say you wanna get a t-shirt made. Say you're doing an event and you wanna get the t-shirt made you're gonna have a very hard time getting these little fine hairs stitched. So what that means is your logo will never look the same at all because depending on who prints it and depending on the quality of the job, they may never be able to get it right. Now this, I found this on Google, but it says created by significant design, I think. But even the designer, everybody has their own style. So you can see by the designer in their logo, this is a pretty busy, busy designer. Like they like a lot going on. They got shading going on, two different color. They got about actually five, six different colors in their, um, their own logo. So I don't recommend this because it's just very hard to duplicate. Now, this is another one that I have seen a couple of times where um, actually a girl sent me this like, well, she didn't send this exact one to me, but she sent me a logo that had like um, the circles around it. The reason why this is not a good logo is because, again, it's going to be very hard to get this circle printed because the circle has shading in it as well. And then also her C-H-I-C, that also has shading in it as well. I don't know if you can tell. So because you have all these things, these variations going on, even though this looks simple, it's not as simple as you think it's going to be. This is another one where you're going to have a big problem with because of the multiple shading, because of the skinny lines, when your logo is shrunken down to a half an inch and then black and white, it should still look just as good as if it was, you know, six inches wide. The shading 
is going to cause printing problems with this. And I keep saying printing problems because you don't realize how much the logo is going to be affected by different um, things that you choose. So if you want to get, say, a product line, your logo is going to affect how the, how it's, you know, um, what type of bottles you can get. How hard is it going to be to print on? How many colors is in your logo? The more colors you have in your logo, the more expensive it is to goddamn print. Oh, Lord. Yeah, this is another one. So with this logo, I think that it is very, 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 very urban. Um, but I like the pink color, right? But the problem is, it's just got way too much going on. So you got glitter here, right? You got shading here. Then you got two different colors here. Then you got diamond. I mean, you got, you know, the shine effect. Then you got the, the, the hair. Then you got the, the pearls and the, like, it's just too much going on. Nothing about this local screams professional at all or a big company, nothing. Another some, okay. This is another one that is horrible. The reason why is the glitter it's very outdated, very hood, ghetto, however you want to call it. The different colors. Um, this logo, if you shrunk it down, I wonder if I could do it. If I shrunk it down, oh, it won't let me. If I was to shrink it down, you still won't be able to, you won't know what this is. And it's busy as hell. Look at how damn, you got the girl on the side, the B and the M. Boss moves extensions. This is just as horrible. So busy, 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 busy. Now you may say, now you may say, oh my god, but I'm young and I'm fun and etc. And this video is not for the girls that really is looking to have a brand that they are more concerned what it looks like visually. This video is for the women who want to have a company. Two different things. A company. You want to look like a company. You want to move like a company. You want to feel like a company. That's what this this video is for. Again, this is not screen company. Okay, this logo screams small business. Now, this is the interesting thing. This is a logo I did a, a long time ago, a couple years ago, for a client. Now, I I used to do logos for you guys that you guys asked me to do. And I wouldn't even, I would tell you my opinion, but I wouldn't push it on you. Even though I knew it was not going to work out for you. Hey, I mean, a hard head make a soft behind, right? So, I mean, I'm not about to sit up here and convince you that when you go to get your logo printed, that there are these little leaves I may um, end up blurry depending on what you're trying to print on because of my past experiences. I'm not going to, listen, I'm going to tell you, but... It ain't my job to convince you. You want to you want to make costly mistakes? Go ahead, do you? Now, this is now okay. So back to this logo. I stopped doing logos like this. The reason why is because I know better. You may not know better, but I know better. And because I know better, I have to do better. And I feel like I will be blessed more. If I do things that I know that are correct versus just doing things because of taking your money. So I really stopped doing logos like this. I just had a, um, me and a girl was going back and forth last week because she is looking for a type of logo that I just, I can't do anymore. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm a big girl now. I'm a businesswoman. And I'm not a design business. This is not Burger King have it your way. This is me being a business coach teaching you what's right and wrong and then you following behind. So you want someone to design something that, you know, is only eye appealing to you and is not functional, then you got to hire a graphic designer. Now, I'm going to show you some logos that I think are pretty decent that I know for a fact is very simple, very plain, but just stick with me. This is something that is a good logo. Now, this is a good mascot logo, right? Mascot logo for you guys that do not know. A mascot is something, a logo that you don't need words behind it, like McDonald's M. McDonald's M is a mascot. 
very clean, very simple. Um, no matter what print job, what printing job is needed, the printer will be able to accommodate. Very solid black lines. Very every printer has black, so it's very it's going to be very easy to replicate this logo. Another one, very easy to replicate this logo. If you you shrink this damn logo down an inch and a half, you gonna know what this logo is a mile away. If you can see a mile away, y'all know what I mean. Now. This logo, I think, is pretty decent. The problem I have with is all the shading, all the colors. There is one, two, three, four, about five different colors in this logo. That's too much. It would be better if, um, it would be better if it was just very simple. Um, Amanda says, is it a specific style of font that you should use? Yes, there is. You do, you want to stay away from scripted font, okay? You want to stay away from like, you see how this M is? You want to stay away from that because we want this, um, you want to stay away from scripted fonts because the smaller they get, the harder it is for the client to read. And regardless of what you think, or not saying you girl, but I'm just saying, regardless of what y'all think, and I say y'all because when I'm on the phone with y'all, this is how y'all talking to me. And I have to tell y'all, you are looking for pretty, but I am looking for functionable, okay? Now, this is a logo that I did for a clothing company, eCulture, all right? Um, actually, no, damn, this ain't even a finished logo. I actually moved the E closer to the C, shit. But you get the gist of the logo. Very simple, um, very clean, looks corporate. This is another logo. I hope she don't mind, but um, she's actually changing this logo. She's changing the whole name of her hair company. And I told her to change the name of her hair company because it was not going to be easy for people to pronounce if she was to do any type of radio advertisement or anything. And she said, nope. But a year later, she contacted me and told me she needed to do it again. So, but this is her logo. I did her logo like this. This is her mascot. Um, we kind of fought on this logo. Um, she did want something a little busier. So I tried to do a compromise and give her these two L's as the busy part. But it looks very corporate, looks very clean. Um, you won't know, you won't be able to tell that she is like a small business. So let's go and talk about my damn logo mistakes, okay? Because I have definitely screwed I have been in business since I've been 17 years old, okay? I'm 35, I'll be 36. I have definitely messed up. Now, the problem is, is that you really don't know your logo is really fucked up. Excuse my language. You don't know your logo is messed up until you got some shit to do. That's when you find out that the logo is messed up. And by that time, it's too damn late. You emotionally invested in the damn thing. You don't sat there. And spend hours and hours and hours developing this brand that is based on this damn logo. So you are emotionally invested in this damn thing, okay? Now comment and let me know if y'all can relate. Just say relate, drop me emoji or something so I can know y'all with me. And y'all relate to what I'm saying. Because this is not my first logo. My first logo, I couldn't find it. But my first logo, I started a delivery service when I was 17, going on 18. I delivered diapers and formulas, bottles, Baby products, baby food. I accepted food stamps at your door for the baby food. I had a credit card machine. So I'll go right to your door like pizza. You could swipe your EBT card. I'll give you a baby food. I'll deliver it. I had a catalog. I had a website. At that time, you it was not you were not able to really like design logos and websites yourself. It was not like it was not like it is today. So I spent three thousand dollars on my logo on website because that's just how much it was. Yes. Um, Miss Smith, you relate to me? Okay, I'm girl. I'm glad you're the only one that relates to me in this chat. Okay. Um, so soiree designs, soiree design logo and branding was not good. Now, you may think this is a pretty, this is my business card. This is my old business card. You can't tell that I'm a small business based off of this design. Right. So you may look at this and be like, oh, my God, sorry. No, that look good. Oh, my goodness. Look, you see, I got a 1866 number. Now I'm doing soiree design when I'm like 21. OK. 
Um, mine is scripted, and I just realized it prints ugly. I need to change it ASAP. Yes, girl. Oh, you know, Smith. Um, I am teaching a class tonight on how to um do your own logo. That's what I'm getting to. So you'll definitely want to um hit me up in my inbox so you, I can put you in a class tonight. Think star. Amanda said, think star. It's helpful. I need to change mine. Yeah, girl, I am here to help and share all the pain and misery to save y'all, honey. I am trying to save you. You guys don't know my experience because I'm not good at sharing. I try to be, but I'm not good at it and I'm getting better at it. But I have had all every business I have had has been successful. Meaning it has supported me and my family. I got a lot of brand recognition, TV exposure, because I know business. And the only reason why I know business is because trial and error. Boom. Let me tell you about this goddamn logo. Now this S and D, this S and D was too skinny. So it was always a pain in the ass to print. Okay. Pain in the ass. Then the squiggly lines up under this S and D was also very hard to recognize once the um once it was shrunken to maybe a half of a half of an inch, right? Because if you're doing an event, you're doing a flyer, and you, you know you send them your logo, they have to shrink it to fit. You're not realizing this stuff, okay? So I didn't have any problem with the color scheme. The color scheme was fine. It was this goddamn font. Another thing, soiree design. No one could pronounce the name correctly. This is a big problem. And when I try to tell you guys how your name needs to change or your name is going to cause you issues, you're so damn emotionally attached to it that it's going in one ear, not the other. Some of y'all have your hair company or your businesses named after your kids, your mother, your somebody that passed. And that's all fine and dandy. But don't no one care about that stuff when they're trying to figure out how to spell your business name to get to your damn website. Picture this, okay? You're doing a radio commercial with another brand, right? Or say y'all put on a not-for-profit. Or let's just say you're throwing a chair, uh, a food drive, right? I'm good for throwing food drives around Thanksgiving. So say you're doing a food drive. Boom. It's radio advertisement with the food drive, okay? Maybe the radio wants to throw on some advertisement to help with the food drive, okay? This is very common. I put this together many of times before, okay? I don't fed over 3,000 people. The radio says, sponsored by Soiree Design. How do you think people are spelling Soiree Design? They are not spelling it S-W-A-R-A-E. They're spelling it the correct way, S-O-I-R-E-E, -E, whatever. So they're never getting to my website. Oh, I could purchase the subdomain and redirect them to this one, but that still doesn't solve the problem. The problem is ain't no one's going to be able to spell my goddamn business name unless I spell it out for them. And that is a big, big issue, okay? Now, I shrunk the webs, I shrunk this down so you can see how the, the S starts to disappear because it's so skinny. I mean, the logo's not bad for it to be in my only second logo in my life and I was a kid, but it still is not what it's supposed to be doing. Now, this is only raw hair's first logo. I got this logo made on Fiverr, okay? This was made, I got this made about three and a half, four years ago. The name of my company was called Best Virgin Hair For You. This is before I started even selling hair. This is when me selling hair was just an idea. So I created a logo, got a little Instagram page, and posted some hair and figured out, figured out the rest, okay? I suppose I, you know, I sold over a thousand dollars worth of hair. I ain't even have no damn hair. Now, once I real, okay. Once I, okay, let me tell y'all the story how this logo changed from Best Virgin Hair, the big company name changed from Best Virgin Hair for You to Only Raw Hair. I was on the phone with the founder of Wigs Across America and I had sent some hair to Peak Mills. And me, and the, me and the founder was on the phone and I was telling her I didn't like the name and uh, we were discussing arrangements with Peak Mills and the 
um, organization to use my hair because my hair was a my hair is amazing. I mean, shit, it's amazing. Okay, y'all that have my vendor know the hair is amazing. So, anyways, to make a long story short, they didn't want they just wanted me to um, supply them the hair, but they didn't want my brand associated with it. And the reason I'm the reason why is because it did not look corporate like when you're partnering with certain brands your brand needs to look just like they want to partner with brands that complement them you will never get into certain doors with looking like you are a, a home-based business meaning just because you are running your home your your business for home does not mean you can't be a, a company and what happens is that you don't understand the rules on how to create a company so you never really fully set one up. So when I was on the phone with her and um, I was telling her I was going to change my company name, this is the name I came up with, Only Raw Hair. And I wanted my logo to be very professional, very L'Oreal, that type of feel. You know, you want, your, you want it to be really, really nice. So this was the first logo for Only Raw Hair. Cute logo, right? Cute, Okay. The problem is, look at this damn logo, okay? Looks great, great behind black, but it's not realistic. My logo is not always going to be behind black. Now you see how the difference? Look like two different logos. You see how the white just blends right in? That's not good. That shading caused me problems with printing. This is when I, that shading caused me problems with printing, Okay. So I could never really get the, the logo right. Even when I got the logo printed on my boxes, I couldn't get it right because the, the, the printing company could not print the shade. It had to be solid. So my logo was never consistent. So boom, this is the end result for only raw hair. Real hair for real women, okay? Solid, black, plain, actually I'm lying. This isn't even the last version on um, this. I have no shading. I don't even have shading on the logo. Okay. But this is where we're at now. So I went from that to this. Okay. Do you see the progress and the growth? Okay. Boom. Chic bundles. Now, for some of you guys, you may know, may not know, I own only raw hair, Chic Bundles, and Star University. Now, Chic Bundles was a branch off from only raw hair. I could say, I, if you want to hear about that story, why I separated the two companies, let me know in the comments and I can make a video for it. But Chic Bundles, this was the original logo. Got it done on Fiverr, okay? Boom. I could have really just did this shit myself, to be honest with you. Um, now that I know what I know, but you don't know what you don't know until you know what you don't know. Um, and I did, I just did a video on the private Facebook group too. So make sure y'all go and watch that. The video was about, you don't know what you don't know until you learn what you don't know. Now, how do you figure out what you don't know? So hope that helps some of y'all, but this was the original logo. Now you're like, okay, star it's plain easy to read what's the problem let me show you what the damn problem is okay let me know if y'all tell me if y'all could tell me if you can see what the problem is tell me if you can see what the problem is put the comments in below it's a long pause because there is a delay so the problem is, is that this chic bundles, you can't see. And, it's, and it was definitely not getting printed when I was sending the logo um, because it was so, so small and skinny. So there's a problem with fonts that are scripted and fonts that are too goddamn skinny. They are very difficult to replicate, okay? So I changed that logo to this one, boom still a goddamn problem now i didn't get this logo done on this logo was done on fiverr right but this logo i paid 200 dollars for and for me this logo is better than this logo and the reason why 
to yes, Meryl is hard to read. It's small. The reason why this one was bad was because of again, it was skinny font. You can't read it. You don't. You can't read what the hell that say. You can't read. You can see the mascot, but you can't read this shit. And the problem is, and this is why I really stopped working with graphic designers, and I started doing my own my own stuff because they're there to make things look good they are not worried about what is functional for your company they want to get your job they want you to hire them and get it they want to get the job over with so they can move on to the next boom so they send you three logos you pick one you like boom we moving on there is no it's not going to print well and your customers may not be able to read it they don't give a damn about that this is why when i'm talking to you guys and i'm trying to tell you Hire someone that can walk you through what you should be doing and should not be doing. But the problem is you really can't find people like that because a graphic, a lot of graphic designers are not business owners. They may own a business, but they are not business owners. Most people that own small businesses, they own a small business, but they are not a business owner. They, they own a job owning. And if you ever read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that's actually going to be the um in our private Facebook group, you guys. Just a heads up, that's going to be the next book for March. Rich Dad Poor Dad. Um, if you ever read that book, it teaches you how what's the difference between an employee and employer. And graphic designers, ninety nine point nine percent of them, they're like stylists. A stylist can own her own shop, but guess what? If she don't come up to work, she ain't gonna make no money. Yeah, she may have booth rent. Yeah, people there may be in booth rent, but she the main one. She the main breadwinner most of the time. They can't, stylists can't get behind the chair because they're not bosses. They're workers. They just have a salon that they work in. So we, I had to change this, okay? And this is the end result. So boom, we go from here, there to there, the end result, Okay. The thing with logos and brands and business is you cannot be emotionally attached. Star University. Okay. This is my new baby. So what I'm doing is if you have not figured out, I am transitioning from hair to business coaching because I love business coaching and I just know what the hell I'm talking about. So this is the first logo for Star University. Okay. No, I did not. I don't go on fiber anymore. I have my own graph um, design team. This was what we started out with, okay? Because I wanted it to be like two books, right? Star University. But I don't want more than one color, right? So that was the first thing. So then we changed it, right? Boom. Still don't like it though. So then this is what we do. We go in here. And this is the end result. All right. End result for Star University. So now I'm going to show you some logos that I personally did. And I'm going to explain, these are my coaching clients. Um, this is only a couple, say out of a hundred, I'm only showing you three just for time's sake. Cause I feel like you get the gist of this video. So this is her before logo. Okay. And this is, I walked her through this, told her what needs to be done to change it. Um, and I felt like she just needed complete brand change and a business name change. The reason why, because I don't even know how to pronounce that name. Euphoria, I think. Dreams, high quality hair extensions. E-U-D, I think that's what that is. And this is what um, I gave her after. So this is her mascot. This is, she wanted a mascot like this. So this was my compromise. Bella Rose, um, luxury hair extensions. This looks more professional and corporate in my opinion you let me know um this is another one of my favorite clients um i am hair collection right this is actually this is her logo very 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 busy and then we go to this is what i did for her so this was her before and this was her after one is very clean and professional you won't be able to tell that she is a small business with this logo. You can't tell. That's the goal. You don't want someone to look at your logo and be able to say, oh, that's a black person that own that business. Or that's, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying that to say like, 
No, I am saying it. I don't give a damn how y'all feel. That's just the bottom line. You don't want people to be like, oh, that look ghetto. Oh, wow. Like, I can see some logos and be like, oh, a black person owned that company. Or a, a, a um, some, no, I could really, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not even gonna try to cover it up. This is another um, logo. So her company was Sugar. This is her logo. And this is what I gave her. This is what she did. This is what I gave her. Um, so yeah, so let me, let me know what you guys think about my logo uh, design um, upgrade that I have become knowledgeable on, I guess. I don't even know if I said that right. But let me know what y'all think. I mean, do y'all, I am not everybody's cup of tea because I have learned and done, have wasted a lot of money. So I'm not everyone's cup of tea when it comes to doing y'all logos. And I'm, I'm very, very clear with that. This is why the class tonight, you'll be able to, I'm just going to show you how to create your own damn logo because it ain't hard. But my number one uh, tip for creating a logo. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss Smith. She said the I am one was really nice. Yes. And you know, she let me do, she's the only one out of all three logos, the only one that she just let me do what I wanted to do because she's, because she trusted my judgment. So she let me do what I wanted to do. And that was the, I could, and that was the, um, that was the, the, the end result. She got a goddamn banging logo. Okay. Number one tip for creating a logo is, it's a not, it's not this. That's just a note. I forgot to take it out. It is stay out your goddamn feelings when you are building these logos. That is the worst thing you could do when you are trying to make a business decision. People who are emotionally attached cannot make proper decisions. This is why you have boards. This is why large companies have boards of people because by you being an owner, you are so emotionally invested. You are blinded. It's like being with a nigga. I mean, um, excuse my fridge. It's like being with a man. That's no good for you. Everybody around you see it. And you may even see it, but you are so emotionally attached. You don't know how to get out of it. And you got to stay out your feelings. And one way to stay out your feelings is stop saying to yourself, your logo needs to represent you because it doesn't need to represent you. This is a company. You are creating a company and your company could bring you abundant amount of wealth. Your company could break generational curses. This is a a whole entity that is that is going to be living and breathing that is not you that's two different things two different people this ain't you this is a company so i will tell you to stay out your feelings and stop thinking that this logo is a representation of you yes you should like it yes you should be proud of it but that does not mean just because your favorite color is yellow that's the color to go with oh my god that is the worst. Is somebody get me and they're like, oh my God, my favorite color is red. Can you make my logo red? What, bitch? What? No. So tonight, the DIY hair company um, brand, I'm going to do the class. It's going to be a, th I think it's going to be a two or three part series. So I'm going to show you how to do your logo. I'm going to show you how to do your website. I'm going to show you how to um, do your brand identity. And, oh, shucks. My child is home. Excuse me. Excuse me, guys. Oh, my mother do this call. My child is home. So, so what I was telling you is, um, the class. So, so what I was telling you is, um, the class. Oh my God. I hope, can y'all hear me better? Please let me know if y'all can hear me. Just give me a thumbs up.
Okay, so I think I am done. Something will happen with my audio. So I will tell you that the class is tonight. And if you want more information, I'll put the information in the bio and also you can email me. But please let me know if this helped. Please like it and comment below so that way I know it was very helpful. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so that way the next time I put up a video, you will be notified. All right, you guys, you have a blessed, blessed day.